Good evening. So yeah, my name is Darren Scott. Thank you for the introduction, Mark. I'm, I'm an agile uh, within the bingo and poker squads over in the gaming tribe. I've worked here now for almost 18 months, um, and I'm delighted to be kicking us off. So my talk's all about what a purple frog taught me about being agile, um, or more in detail, delivering customer value and innovation against a campaign-driven deadline. So when I knew this talk was going ahead, I thought it would be a good idea to brain dump all my thoughts to get some ideas flowing. As you can see, I'm quite a simple person. It made me realize what a huge project this was, spanning around four to five months, so there was a lot going on. Um, my first challenge was to simplify this down to a 10-minute lightning talk, which is easier said than done. As you can imagine, a lot happened over that time, so I've tried to extract some of the highlights to talk to you about tonight. So what I'll be talking about, some of the journey, a few of my favorite challenges and how we overcame them, and also the lessons that we learned along the way. Challenge one, can it be done? So for those of you that play Sky Bingo, might be familiar with Prize Burst, or if not, then I recommend that you go to the website and play tomorrow. It's a free-to-play game, and it's safe to say it was probably the biggest thing that happened to Sky Bingo since the launch of the Bingo rebrand, which was before my time. So what was the challenge? It was a new job. I wasn't long into the job. Um, quite, quite new at Sky Betting and Gaming. Lots of new people, and none of them are new, so lots of new personalities and working styles to get to know. It was a new team as well, so it was a brand new squad. I think Poker and Bingo at the time had just merged into one squad, um, and they were largely formed up of a bunch of graduates, um, so they just graduated from boot camp, which is the SBG grad scheme. Now, very talented and passionate group of people, but fair to say that maybe their experience was yet to be proven as most of the work so far had been done on internal projects. We hadn't yet worked out their throughput or cycle time, and I was handed this new mammoth project with a hard TV campaign-driven deadline, and I was told it would help change the face of bingo. And we were asked to build a free-to-play game pretty much from the ground up. To be honest, the questions were being asked, can it be done? How do you think I was feeling? Yeah. A little bit panicked. So what did we do? We built a proof of concept, a POC. A simple page with a single button demonstrating the flow. Why did we do this? Because we knew if we could figure out a way to prove the theory early on, we'd be in a much better place later down the line. Not only that, but we'd build confidence in the team and also with our stakeholder group. So as a result of the POC, we silenced our critics, we proved that we can do it, we removed that unknown and uncertainty, and the confidence was up, and the team morale was also high. What did we learn from this? Early visibility is key. De-risk as early as possible through spikes or pox. This will help you massively later on. It will help gain the trust across the business. Here's a little example of the, the very first quick and dirty frog game that was produced in our team. There's a bit of a, bit of a trial. Again, just to get that early visibility, get the team to be brought in and just to experiment. So challenge two, compliance. I'm sure you might have all come across some of the compliance challenges maybe before working in delivery. Okay, so in the beginning, I remember there was a lot of excitement and buzz and anticipation around actually what the game was going to be. We were working with a third party multi-channel marketing agency at the time, and I remember being invited to what they call the tissue meeting, uh, which apparently is an informal presentation of creative ideas. And really it's to kind of, it's very common in advertising and design agencies, and they, they allow the agency to really test their thinking on clients without committing to progressing any of the work. So we were presented with a few ideas, as you can see here. The first one was bonus bubbles, so that was all about this pur purple lucky frog. Um, it went down a storm on social, apparently, and it was, they wanted to make him famous. So that's kind of where he came from. Number two was smash for cash, so smash the glass sets with the golden hammer to see if you're a winner. Three was bursting to win, inflate the balloon, when it reaches the pin, explodes and showers you with purple glitter before revealing a prize. And then finally we had racing piglets. I'm not quite sure where that came from or what it was all about, but it was just a little bit surreal. I think it was about being disruptive. So long story short, I won't go into the detail. After a lot of back and forth, the decision was finally made to go with the frog due to its marketable appeal. And so Froggy Freebies was born. Now, in terms of the challenge, 
at the time, I don't know if you remember, but Bud Light relaunched their famous frog adverts. Um, and there was an article that hit the press, which was something around indicating that these sorts of ads might be more persuasive to younger audiences. So compliance were a bit worried by that, and they didn't want the frog to look too real. So they set the agency on the mission of basically coming back with some concepts and doing a bit of frog research. So they did, and they went to town. The amount of research, effort, and frog studies that went on was quite incredible. I've never seen so many frogs. They were looking at different approaches to developing the style, the look and feel of the frog. They looked at a number of different ways of achieving personality with various approaches. It was really mind-blowing stuff. At the time, I was dragged into so many meetings about this frog and countless conversations and discussions. It was just, yeah, like I say, it was, it was pretty incredible. But yeah, so here we have some examples of the realism of the frog. We had characterized frogs, playful frogs, red-eyed tree frogs, green tree frogs, a few exploratory sketches and also some shooting poses as well of maybe how the game was going to look. Um, after lots of frog drawings, they went with the slender purple frog as this was the preferred style. Um, people were getting so involved in the detail of this frog that they were losing sight of the vision of the game and you could say they couldn't see the wood from the trees. Ultimately, all our team really cared about was the technology behind the mechanic. It didn't matter whether it was a frog or a racing pig at the end of the day. So I'm digressing slightly, but bear with me. Let's fast forward to roughly less than one month before we went live with the project. Everything was going okay. Sprint goals were on target, team were happy, stakeholders were happy, Frog was happy, and then this happened. So this article hit the press. Gambling websites must stop appealing to children, regulators warn. And this was the, uh, the bit that I like the best. So the use of particular cartoons and animals Names of games such as Piggy Payout and Fluffy Favorites are likely alone or in combination to enhance appeal to under 18s. So let me just remind you, what was our character? He's a purple frog. And what was the name of the game? Froggy Freebies. Hmm, how do you think I felt? So, the challenge here is we had a major compliance issue. Um, we might not even be able to use the frog and the game might even be pulled. As you can imagine, my heartbeat went through the roof. All sorts of emergency meetings with the compliance team were had. So how did we overcome this? So looking at it from a delivery point of view, for me, the best thing that I could do was remain calm and really just protect the team from all the external noise. They didn't really need to know about all these conversations that were going on, especially as they were so focused and committed on getting everything done. So really, it would probably destroy their morale and motivation. Remember what I said about not seeing the wood from the trees. It didn't really matter if we used the frog or not. The game was built in such a way that we could just swap out the assets that needed. So what was the outcome? It was agreed that the frog could stay on the proviso that he sat behind a login and can't be marketed or used in TV or social, so only on site or CRM. So in essence, as a customer, you'd only see the frog in the actual game once you logged in. And you ha we also had to change the name from Froggy Freebies to Prize Burst. So what did we learn from this? When it hits the fan, you need to remain calm. Protect the team and keep them sheltered from the storm. And it's never too late to change direction. There's always another way to do it. Hashtag exciting times. So challenge number three, customer journey buster. So what's a customer journey buster? It's a soft launch to the business. Um, why'd you do it? Because it's a great way to get early feedback before it goes live to real customers. It's a fantastic idea, and it's an obvious thing to do. So what was the challenge? The challenge, just play the little froggy out so you can see him in action. So the challenge was that it hadn't been included as part of our initial planning and inception. We also need to do additional work to release the game to an internal audience. And this was on top of all the, all the bugs that we were already fixing as part of our end-to-end -end testing. Not only that, but the Journey Buster was planned to go out approximately one week before our go-live date. As you can imagine, the scope went up, the timelines weren't getting any longer. How would you feel? You can see there's a bit of a pattern recurring here. Okay, so how did we overcome this? So we released communication to the wider business to encourage people to play the game and provide their feedback. We created a Slack channel for keeping all the feedback in one place. We then needed a simple method to triage the feedback and review which issues we wanted to iterate on before go live. So we introduced daily prioritization, daily prioritization sessions after the stand-up meetings using a Moscow method to decide what we'd fix and what would move to a post-go live backlog. 
would also use a simple confluence page for monitoring the resolution of the bugs. Really important point, not all feedback was actioned immediately unless it was an absolute must or surface an issue that we hadn't already fixed. What did we learn? Consider the customer journey buster as part of your inception process and plan it in upfront. It's a really good thing to do, just make sure you're thinking about it. I'd also add some contingency as well as a buffer for the team for when the unknown comes knocking, because it's likely that it will. Burnups are a great tool for very quickly visualizing and spotting scope creep, as well as communicating progress to your stakeholders. I think also another lesson here was the ability to adapt and push through when times are tough. The team were very proactive and committed in the persistence and determination that they demonstrated to get this out within the short time frame, and with that pressure, it was really, truly commendable. So how did we do? So bringing this back to some of our earlier objectives with Prizeburst, um, driving traffic. So in terms of the week before it went live and the week that it went live, unique visits went up by 43%. Um, in terms of conversion, we saw a positive impact and increase to bet days, stakes, and net margin per user. And we also wanted to become a market leader. So we actually won um, an EGR marketing and innovation award for innovation in bingo for Prizeburst, uh, which is right. Yeah. Um, so we're actually saying goodbye to the frog. So as we mentioned, the frog is no longer relevant, right? Because we can't talk about him, we can't even market him. <clears throat> so it is actually time to wave goodbye. But don't worry, he's not actually dead. He's been on Tinder and he's found love. So he's going off to his uh, other lily pad with his partner. So what's next for prize burst, I hear you say? More on that shortly. But first, let's just hear about some of the lessons again. So lessons in summary. De-risk early on, have trust in your team, perform spikes and pox to provide early visibility, which will help you gain trust across, uh, across um, with your wider stakeholder group. Protect the team, keep the noise away. Adaptability, so it's never too late to change direction. Learn to adapt to your situation. <clears throat> Don't dwell on failures, learn from them and keep moving forward. Resilience, so we could have been derailed at many points throughout this project. For example, the compliance issue that we had, the customer journey buster that came in quite late on. So you have to find a way to push through and bounce back. Empower the team and keep motivation high. If so, they'll reward you with commitment, determination, and grit, and possibly even some overtime, even though I don't advocate that. Collaboration. <clears throat> so I think this is something we talk about a lot in Agile, but it's so important. How you collaborate with your team and also the wider stakeholders may determine the success or failure of a project. If you set out with a goal and you disagree, then you're unlikely to reach your objective. So you need to find a way to work together towards a common goal. And that's why having a vision is so fundamental. Start with why. I don't know if any of you have heard of Simon Sinek, but he has a book called Start With Why. I'd recommend it, it's a great book. And celebrate the successes. This, is, this should be an obvious one, but actually we often lose sight of this because you tend to focus on the next big thing. Celebrate more. So back onto what's happening with Prize Burst then. <clears throat> a lot of work has gone into a brand spanking new creative vehicle to change how we talk about and market Sky Bingo going forwards. And guess what? It's actually launching tomorrow. So talk about good timing. That wasn't planned, by the way. It just fell like that. Um, so I thought it would be quite nice to maybe give you a bit of an exclusive tonight, because it's all going to change tomorrow. We've got a new strap line, which is all about saying hello to exciting times. We've got a new logo. We've got a new family, which is all about meeting the Dillons. You can see on the couch in the middle. There's a new celebrity voiceover with Ryan Clark Neal, who you might recognize from X Factor. Um, and there's a new game animation as well, which I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of right now. Um, there's, I also have access to one of our brand new and exclusive digital ads going live tomorrow. Would you like to see it? Come on, would you like to see it? That's better. Nan's asleep, and Jess is playing the daily free-to-play game Prize Burst. She's gone for diamond. Bingo, she's done it. Fifty pound. Wake your nana up. That's it. Sky Bingo. Hashtag exciting times. There you go. First worldwide exclusive right here. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>